everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. I am so happy to have you here today. Now before we get started, be sure that you're subscribed here that we don't miss out on any of the fun crafty content we have coming. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make these really fun decals and we're going to be using two different versions to do this. So we're going to make one using design space and then we'll make one using just a whole other like option. We're going to use a warp text generator because when you use design space it doesn't allow you to slice any sort of warp text but when you do it this way you can so it makes weeding a lot easier and assembling this so much simpler. Now I do want to give a shout out to our sponsor of today's video Aura and I will talk to you just a little bit more about Aura in just a second but in the meantime let's get started. I'm going to show you how to do this with design space, which is probably not the way that I would recommend. And you'll see why when we go to weed it, because I'm going to do two different designs. That way you can see which way it just works way better. So let's go ahead and make one here in design space. The first thing I'm going to do is open up my text and we'll make them two different words. That way you can tell the difference about which one I'm going to do. So we'll do dog mom here in design space. And then I'm going to take you over to Inkscape and show you how to do it with cat mom. So dog mom, the first thing I want to do is I'm actually going to change my text first. Now you can use any style font that you want. I like to use Cooper Black for this. I just think it looks nice and you should have Cooper Black on your computer to begin with. Now I just do one line first just to make sure I like my font and then I go ahead and I'm going to add the next two lines in. Now you can add more lines if you want, but I think the three lines is pretty good, but you're absolutely welcome to add however many lines you want. Now they are sitting a little far apart for my design, so I do change the line spacing up here. So you just wanna click this down arrow and that'll change your line spacing down. But this takes a while, so what I like to do is I just type in the negative numbers until I'm happy. So like negative one's not even close to where I wanna be, so I go down to like negative five and see if that's a little bit closer. Now, one thing I'm gonna note is that design space has been a little bit weird with its fonts lately. See how it's only really technically grabbing that first one? Don't worry, it'll change all of them. This has been kind of a recent weird thing it's been doing since the update. So negative four looks like about where I want it to be. Now, what I wanna do is use the warp tool. Now, keep in mind that you can't use this unless you have design space access. That's one reason why I don't like using design space for this, but we'll do it just to show you how to do it in design space, and then we'll show you a better way. So what I'm gonna do is click check it out, and then um, the 15 uh, version is the one I wanna do. So I click on that, and then I go ahead and you can just kind of click away from this, and it'll warp it for you. Now I'm gonna make this bigger so that you can see like what I'm doing. That way it just gives you a little bit more space to see. Now I'm gonna add an offset to this. Now for this, I do want kind of a thicker offset. So I make it big enough that all my spots are touching and I don't have any holes. Now if you have a few little holes, it's okay. I'll, let me make it a little smaller to show you how to like correct it if you have a few small holes. Now again, design space has been a little bit weird today, so this might be a little bit of an odd one. All right, so we've got a couple tiny holes. We'll apply that, and we do have some small holes. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go to contour, and you'll see that you've got these two little itty bitty spots. Just click those, and it will get rid of them so that it doesn't cut them out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change my word color just so that it's a little bit prettier. And it'll go back to warped as soon as you like unselect it for some reason. Again, it's a design space thing. It's just been a little bit weird. But once you like unselect it again, it goes back to being warped. Now let's go ahead and add our pet's name. So I'll just use my dog Chevy. And I'm gonna change the color of this and I just wanna make it like a good contrasting color against whatever color I chose for dog mom. Then you wanna size this so that it fits on your design and you kind of just get an idea of like how big you want it. Keeping in mind, you're gonna have a little bit of an offset on this. I want you to do something for me and I want you to just Google search your name. I'm gonna Google search my own name and show you kind of what comes up. Now for me, I'm gonna see a lot of things that I'm fine with having on the internet like my website, my YouTube, YouTube videos that I'm either tagged in or I have created, Instagram and things like that. However, with you, you may find things that you don't want on the internet. And I have to admit, I found a few things that I didn't want there either. A lot of personal information, a lot of things that you just don't want exposed. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that using our sponsor today of Aura. 
Now, pardon the interruption. I just want to talk to you about our sponsor, Aura, for just a second. Aura is a service that helps protect your data. There is all kinds of bad people out there on the internet that want to sell your data to scammers, spammers, and just about anybody who will do bad things with that information. The scary thing is all your information is just out there floating in the big space that we call the internet. Everything from your full name, email address, home address, health information, relatives information is out there for just anybody to find. This is why I've been using Aura because what they will do is actually show me what brokers have my information out there for sale and Aura will actually go and opt out of all of that information for me automatically. I don't have to do anything extra. By cleaning up this information, it really reduced the amount of scam and spam messages and phone calls and things that I was receiving. But the best part is that this information is going to help protect me against hackers that might want to get into things like my social media, my bank account, my health records, all sorts of things on the internet that really we want to keep very, very private. Aura is also working behind the scenes all the time to protect me and my husband from any kind of data threat. Now, let's be honest, it would be so much easier to stop the hackers if they were just random people like walking around our house all dressed in black being creepy. But that's just not the case. You can't see them out there on the internet trying to get all that information from you. I get so many other features included with Aura, which includes things like VPN, identity theft insurance, parental controls, antivirus and password management and those are such helpful things especially if you've got littles at home that you want to protect from any of the weird stuff going on those parental controls are fantastic and it's all included in just one program you don't have to do anything crazy super easy nothing techie involved just a few little forms to fill out and you're ready to go and like I said, Aura is always working in the background, which gives me great peace of mind when I'm crafting or when I'm just banking or I'm looking at maybe some health records. I know I'm protected from anybody finding any of that data that I don't want them to have. Now, I value that protection that Aura gives me, and I know that you will too. Now, you can sign up for a free two-week trial at www.aura.com slash Corinne. You can find that linked down in the video's description and also written out here on the screen in case you want to check it out. Thank you so much to Aura for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the craft. I click on offset and this offset's gonna be really, really small. This one I usually do at like almost a 0.08 sometimes. It just kind of depends on like how big you want it. I think 0.08 might be a little too small. So let me see what 0.1 is. You kind of have to play with this a little bit just to see what you think of the sizing. I actually think that might be a little too small still. So I'm just gonna go a little bit bigger. I think that's pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. Now your offset is going to turn black eventually once it decides that it wants to actually work. Now before you do anything else, I want you to take your entire design, so I want you to select everything on your screen and go to align and simply center them. That's just gonna make sure everything looks really nice and even. Then what you'll need to do is this yellow word, so the main name, I want you to take it off of your design, move it to the side. We're doing this because we can't cut the name on top of our design due to the fact that we cannot slice our warp. Warp is not seen as one single layer, which means that we're not able to slice it. So in order to fix that problem, what we do is we take our offset and we take where it says warp 15, which is our dog mom lettering, and simply click attach. Now everything should change to the purple color, um, which except that main like back section, which should stay black. Then I want you to change the animal name or whatever name or word you're using and change that to the same color that is your design. Now, what you're gonna see is when we cut this, it's gonna look like this has a ton of cut lines in it and it's going to. You can't see those cut lines currently with it being attached, but this is one of the reasons why I don't like to do it this way because there's a lot of cut lines, which makes it really hard to weed. So if you're somebody who hasn't done this a lot yet, trying to cut it is gonna be really hard. Now I'm just gonna throw the name somewhere in the design. And then I wanna size this down because this is like really big and I don't wanna make it this big. Um, I'm gonna make it like five inches. That's plenty of space for you to see what we're doing. Now don't be scared because I have Inkscape open. This is so easy to do, but you could do this with Canva. You could do this 
with just about anything that you can get a transparent PNG. But this is gonna be the free way to do it, and it's just so easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that same thing, except I'm gonna use Cat Mom this time so that we can tell the difference between which design was from where. So I type in Cat Mom, and for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and type it in all three times. And I'm going to go over to my font. You To get the font or to get the text, you just click the A over on the left-hand side anywhere on your screen. I'm gonna go over where it says font. It doesn't really say font, but it shows the name of your font. And there's a drop-down menu. Just like with Design Space, it's gonna bring up all the fonts you have on your computer. So I simply find Cooper Black and select it, and you'll see that it changes my font. Now again, we have the same problem where there's a lot of space between our letters. This is gonna be a little bit different, but also still pretty easy. Up here at the top, you'll see that you have this vertical shift option. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my font here. So you can see we have our font. You're gonna have this vertical shift button. If you don't see that, just make sure you double click on your font. That's why I did that. What I wanna do is I'm gonna select the top line of my text. Then I'm gonna use the little buttons over here and I'm just gonna click the, uh, actually the up arrow, I clicked the wrong one. But you click the little up and I know it seems really counterintuitive because you would think negative would be down. But negative on this is actually up. So then I'm gonna click it until I'm happy with like how close it's sitting to my other word. I think that's pretty good at 2032. Now I wanna do the same thing for my bottom line and all I'm gonna do here is just put a negative 20.32 hit enter, and that way they're all spaced exactly the same. I promise it sounds really confusing, but once you do it, it's super easy. You just need to use this one right here where the two A's look like they're just kind of one's a little taller than the other one. So now that we have this, you can make it bigger if you want to. You just click on the little selection tool here and you can make it bigger. I'm not gonna bother, there's no need for it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to file and I want you to click export PNG image. Then you need to click export as, and we're gonna save this as a PNG, but we have to click export as first. And it's gonna tell us, like give us the option of where we wanna save it. So I'm gonna put it in to my Cricut folder, and then I'm gonna put it into my folder for four videos only. That way I can find it easy, and I'm just gonna call it Cat Mom PNG. That way I know what it is. Click save. Now it's not actually saved yet. We need to still hit export. Click that and you're good to go. Now we're gonna need to use a website that's gonna actually warp our text for us and it's gonna keep it as a PNG, which is gonna allow us to slice. I'll link this website down below, but it's super easy. Go ahead and click upload image and it's going to ask you what image you wanna upload. It should be in your quick access folder, but if not, just go to the other folder that you saved it in. I'm gonna click that cat mom PNG. Now there are a bunch of text options and different ways you can wave this, but we're gonna try to keep it as similar as it was in Design Space. So I use the preset A and just click generate. Look at that, you have this great, easy, super simple design. Now I'm gonna warn you, this down here, don't click this, this is an ad. Um, this website obviously uses ads because it's doing this for free. But all you need to do is right click on this, click save image as, and it'll save your PNG. Now again, I wanna save it into my Cricut folder, into my four videos only. That way it's just easier to find when we're ready to use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and find that folder. I'm gonna call this one Cat Mom, um, well, except I saved it as Can Mom, Cat Mom, um, wave. That way I can find it. Easy. Now let's head over to Design Space and I promise you this seems complicated but this is a million times easier. Now I'm going to put it in the same screen just to make life easier. So what I'm going to do is click upload and then I want to go to my upload image option and I'm going to click browse and find that cat mom uh, wave which again should be in your quick access folder. You're gonna choose complex and you'll notice that this has no background on it. So we don't need to do anything because it's a transparent PNG. Go ahead and click apply and continue and I want you to save it as a cut image. Click upload and then you're gonna add this design over to your canvas. This is honestly the easier way to do it, I promise. Now it's probably gonna open really, really big. And that's totally okay and totally normal. Once it's added, I'll go ahead and scooch this over so that you can see it better. And I'm going to move this just over to this corner just to get it out of the way. 
Now again, design space being a little weird, so it keeps bouncing things around, but that's okay. So I'm gonna change my PNG design color just to something different, we'll do green. And we're gonna do that same thing. We're gonna just add an offset, so click offset. And again, make it however big you want it, but you do want all of it to touch, especially here in the center. So you just wanna make sure that you have it, you know, so nothing's gonna come apart. Then click apply, and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those little holes just by, again, using hide all contours or clicking each of those little spots individually. Now from here, we can use slice, which is really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the text of the name. I'm gonna go ahead and use my cat's name of Waffles, and then we just need to size this just like we did with the dog mom. There's nothing really different. But again, I like to change the color just so it's easier to see against the color of the decal, just for now. Now this is a bit of a longer name, so it is gonna take up a little bit more space, but that's okay. Then, just like before, use the offset and you wanna make this one quite a bit smaller because you don't want it to be taking up too much space of the letters of the words cat mom. I think that one looks pretty okay, so I'm gonna go with that and just click apply. Now, what we can do from here is I'm gonna go ahead and select the entire design. I'm gonna align it and center it. Now, this is where the magic happens with not using design space to create the whole design. Grab the offset, then hold shift and grab where it says cat mom wave. I want you to go ahead and click slice. Then what you're gonna do is you wanna get rid of any of the parts that you don't need for the design. So this slice result here, this one here, and this one here should be what you need to get rid of. It's like the top three pieces. Now, when I move this over and I do this so you can see it, do you notice that we don't have any like pieces or parts. That's what makes this a lot easier because when we go to actually weed this, it's gonna go so much quicker. You're not gonna have to layer anything. It's just easier. So now I'm gonna align this again and I'm gonna center it. Then what I wanna do is I wanna center the waffles name and the cat mom, which is now slice result. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach them. I don't care what color they change, it doesn't matter. Then I just wanna go ahead and size everything down just to make life a little bit easier. Now, because I don't wanna get confused as to like which one is which, I just usually try to take note of like the shapes, but you can see how different the dog mom is versus the cat mom. The cat mom goes a little different direction, so this should be completely fine. But I'm gonna teach you another really fun trick because I like to cut these out so that the actual like decal whole shape is this shape versus the um, versus having like a big square around it or anything like that. Because these are great, they don't have to be placed like a common decal or you can just include a piece of transfer tape with them, but these just look really nice when they're cut this way. So I'm gonna show you how to do that because it's honestly really, really easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this black offset and I'm gonna duplicate it and I duplicate it like four times. That way you have five total. Then I'm gonna scooch these down a little bit. Then what I wanna do is I'm gonna select those designs, so these four, and the cat mom. I'm gonna go to align and I'm gonna center them. Now it's gonna look like the cat mom part disappeared. I promise you it didn't, it's just behind our black pieces. Now if that annoys you, all you simply have to do is you can drag the design part back up over top of everything else. But what's really important is that we take these black pieces, all five of them, and attach them. Now again, it's gonna pull them back in front. It's just what it does. If it bothers you, again, you can just right click it and send it to the back. I'm gonna do the same thing for the dog mom one as well. That way we have a really nice cutout. So again, I just make the duplication a couple of times. Usually four is pretty good. And by attaching them, that tells Design Space that you want it to cut around that shape five times. That way you're not having to change your cut settings or anything like that. It's just a way easier way to do a multiple cut and get it to cut through all the way through the backing of your vinyl. It's called a die cut decal and these look really professional. So again, once I've got everything centered, I'm gonna grab those offsets and I wanna grab the Chevy offset down here and then I just wanna go ahead and attach them. Right click them and send them to the back. 
that's gonna have us ready to cut out our designs. And I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make this one just a little bit bigger just because I think it's a little small. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click save because again, I just wanna make sure I save all my work before I hit make it. That way it's just there. I'm not gonna lose all the work that I just did. I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the make screen so that you can see it and get an idea. And then we'll go over to the machine and get these cut out. This is such a fun project. And honestly, it's a lot easier than you think. Now I have my Joy Extra selected, so I'm just gonna tell it on matte. I am gonna cut these on my um, maker, but for now I'll just show you what it looks like. So you're gonna have your black pieces, which these are your background pieces for your cat mom and your dog mom. Top one being the dog mom, this one being the cat mom. Then what you'll see is you have these two pieces. Now I'm gonna note to you, I did not uh, attach these. So we'll go back and do that. But what your other one should look like is this. And this is the one that we did with just attaching and not being able to slice. Now, again, like I said, it's going to look like this is going to cut really easily. I promise you it won't. It's awful. But let's go ahead and head back over really quick because I did forget to attach the slice result and the waffles. And if you do that, it's going to cut a lot easier for you. So now when I click make it, you'll see that it's going to cut inside of the cat mom. It just makes life so much simpler. Now what you'll see is that the waffles is going to stay within the cat mom. It's just a lot easier than trying to cut it this way. And like I said, you'll see more why this way is kind of a pain when we actually cut it out on the vinyl. Now I'm just going to use the vinyl setting. It works great for this. The first thing that we'll do is we're going to cut the black. So I have some matte black here. We're cutting these on the vinyl setting. I'm going to load this into my machine or in, onto the mat here. And this is the one that's going to cut around several times so that it gives us that nice like outline cut so that it looks like a die cast cut. Like I love that look. I just think it looks really uh, professional. And then we're going to be using this really pretty pale pink and this one called I believe rose pink. Rose pink from Tech Grab for the wording. It's going to be really cute. unload I'm gonna check to make sure that cut all the way through so I'm just gonna peel up the back here and just make sure that it cut through which it did so I'm gonna unload take this one off the mat and I'm going to then put the new color on but I do need to check because most of the tech wrap has a little like white or clear um, protective layer over it that you'll need to remove so you can just kind of find it by using your pin pen really really lightly on the corner of your vinyl but this is something really important with tech wrap that you need to make sure that you remove it's really thin easy to find once you find it i've got it going there we go so go ahead and pull that off now it does rip sometimes which is fine i'm going to actually not worry about it down here because the cricket's never going to cut down there we'll load this in let this one cut out this is going to cut out waffles and then I'm gonna do this one, which is actually, I just discovered, is color changing. So how fun is that? Uh, so this is a color changing vinyl. So we'll use this one on the Chevy one. Now, before I unload this, I do like to check the cut, even though I'm really confident with tech wrap vinyl and their cuts. I'm gonna just check it really quick, just to be safe. Looks like it cut really nicely, so we're good to go to remove that one from the mat. And we're gonna go ahead and I flip my mat over. This mat is especially sticky because it's pretty new. So I flip my mat over and then I'm gonna remove my vinyl from it, which not always super easy, but I just kind of pull my mat back from my vinyl and then like I said, this one's got kind of a weird cut at the bottom, so we'll just be careful with that. And move that over to the side. And then I'm gonna use the color change, which like I said, was a surprise. I picked it out and didn't realize it was a color change. Again, I did need to take the uh, protective coating off of it, which is fine, no big deal. And then we're gonna go ahead and put this on. I think this one's gonna be really, really fun with the color change. So we're just gonna go with it. I'm gonna go ahead and load this in let this cut we'll do the same thing when it's done we're going to check the cut to make sure it cut well so 
So just like before, we're gonna go ahead and check our cut. I'm just gonna use the little O in mom down here. And I highly recommend you check it, especially when you use new products you're not used to. So that cut really well. I'm gonna go ahead and unload. And then I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down, show you how to weed, because weeding on one of them, way difficult. Weeding on the other, super easy. I wanna show you kind of the weeding lines in this. And I actually found that just rubbing my finger on it really helps see those weeding lines because it keeps the color still a little bit in the background. So that's kind of nice. So I'm gonna to try to kind of show you, but if you notice, and I know it's not gonna stay super long, but if you notice, there's a ton of cut lines here and you're gonna see that as I weed. So I'm gonna weed the harder to weed one first. And this one is the one that we did with solely using the Cricut. So this is our Chevy one. Now it's gonna have cut out all these small pieces. So when I go to weed this, what you're gonna see is I'm pulling out really little pieces for each of my letters. And it's just super difficult to tell what's supposed to stay behind and what's supposed to come out, especially if you are new to doing anything like this, you're new to vinyl, you're new to crafting, this could be really, really difficult. I've done several of these, so I'm pretty confident that I can tell what comes out and what stays in, but you'll see that you end up with these really little itty bitty pieces, just like this tiny little piece, and it's just, it's a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and weed this one, and you'll see the difference in how long it takes me to weed this one, and then I have to layer this one too, versus how long it's gonna take me to do the one that we did with the, uh, using Inkscape and the little program that made our wavy text. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this finished and then I'll show you what it looks like. one all done and you can see how confusing it was it was just a lot of little tiny pieces but now I'm gonna do the one that says cat mom which we did with the um, outside help where we warped it and then we were able to slice it so this one's gonna go way smoother and I think you guys are gonna be really impressed with how much easier this is gonna be to weed and how much nicer this one looks it's just a lot easier to do it outside of design space in my opinion but we'll go ahead and we're gonna get this one. Look at how much quicker this is going. I'm almost already done. I just have to get like the letter centers now. So I just have to get the A's and the O's for mom. And done. Do you see how much faster that was? That's why I say I don't do it in design space. Cause now I still have to layer the Chevy inside the dog mom part, but we're gonna do that. We're gonna get everything layered and I'm gonna show you how I do that as well. Parchment paper is super helpful when it comes to weeding because you can very, very easily use it to uh, help you line things up. So this is the cat mom one and I believe it goes this way. And then this one is dog mom. And I do believe that it goes this way. I did have a little weird spot where I ripped it. Don't worry about it, it's totally fine. I'm not worried about that. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to get some transfer tape. I'm gonna be using some medium tack. Let me scooch those out of the way. And we're gonna just use some medium tack tape. This stuff is great. And what I wanna do with it is I'm going to start with this part. I just find it a little bit easier for me, but you do what works for you. You know what? Let's start with this part. Let's go difficult. So I'm gonna go ahead and just place this somewhere on my tape. I'm not worried about it being centered or anything because I'm gonna make sure to cut my piece of tape bigger than I actually need it. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this and you're going to want to use a squeegee. I love using the squeegee. It makes life so much easier. I burnish this from the back. And then what I wanna do is ro roll the backing off the vinyl. It'll come off a lot easier that way. Then take your parchment paper, place it over the dog mom section of your decal. 
and you're gonna place this on top. You're gonna leave a little edge out where you can place the vinyl on, but keep in mind, vinyl doesn't stick to parchment paper. So you can see I'm physically pushing it down and it won't stick. That's why you use this as a barrier because now we're able to kind of slide this around to figure out where we want it to sit. I think I wanna go down a little bit on that side. That looks pretty good. So what I do is I push that tail down and then I move the parchment paper out of the way and then you just press the decal back down. And then all I do is kind of burnish that back down and then I'm gonna take this, flip it over and I'm going to remove this backing. Now you saw how easy that really was. It's super easy, but it's so much easier to do it the other way because I didn't have to like layer the name and then we're going to go ahead and use our parchment paper again with our black backing and you're going to do the same thing where you're going to lay this down on top of this and then you can take your time and really get this lined up where you want it i don't love doing that without the parchment paper it makes such a big difference and then you're able to press this down without any bubbles it just makes it a lot easier now you could totally give it to somebody like this with transfer tape on it, but because of the way this is designed, you don't have to. You can just peel this off and use it like a sticker. So I like to take my transfer tape back off of it. It's up to you and how you wanna do it, but I'm a take the transfer tape back off kind of fan with this design. And you can see how easy it comes off. You just have to hold the decal down. And then this looks so cool and it's color changing, which is really fun. Now we can reuse this piece of transfer tape because I don't like to waste. And I'm gonna take the waffles one and all I have to do for this one, place my transfer tape over the cat mom portion. And we'll go ahead and burnish this. And then we'll turn this over. And I'm gonna go ahead, I think I'm gonna burnish it one more time from the back real quick. I didn't burnish very hard from the front, so it burnished again from the back. Sometimes it doesn't always wanna stay down with the first burnish. And especially if it's cold, which it is down here, um, in my basement, it may not love to stick as well, but that's okay. We got it on there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and peel this back. Perfection. And again, we'll use the transfer tape and the parchment paper to place this down. Now, again, I'm pretty confident that I have this the right direction, but if not, I can always turn it, but I think that looks wrong. <laughs> I think that looks wrong. I think the rounder parts are on this side. I can always check by looking back at design space, but I definitely had it wrong, so that's okay. So now, again, you do the same thing. Line it up, press this side down, take out your parchment paper, and then you can just put your decal on to your design. Now, I like to try to hold it down a little bit with that tape over here, and I'm sorry that it's a little out of frame. Let me move it up a little bit so you can see a little better. All right, I'm gonna put it down on my table like that and hold it with my transfer tape, and then I just take my squeegee, and voila, I just press this down, and I make sure to give it a good burnish because you want it to stick nicely to the black. And then again, we'll take the transfer tape off just so that we can get a better look at what the detail looks like. Now there's definitely ways to do this where you keep the transfer tape on it um, when you're layering. I don't like doing that. I prefer to send them off like this and then I just include a piece of transfer tape. But look at how good these came out. So fun, so easy to do. Now, which one do you think is the way that you would prefer to do it? Would you prefer to do it like this and have to weed out all those little tiny pieces? Or would you prefer to do it like this with a couple extra programs, but weeding it took a quarter of the time. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions. And thank you again to our sponsor, Aura, for sponsoring this video. I hope you all have a wonderful day and as always, happy crafting.